said to use my loud voice, but those of you who know me well know that I use that voice all the time. <laughs> when you have 25 grandkids, you use the very loud voice all the time. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming this evening as we welcome Shannon Curtis as part of a This Is Your Brain on Art event in Wadena, Minnesota. And, um, you know, when I started Wellness in the Woods a couple years ago, and probably about every two weeks, I try to think, is this really what I want to do? And um, God keeps putting people like you in my lives that say, this is the reason. Last Thursday, I was in Cambridge, Minnesota, and we trained 50 people on suicide prevention. And this weekend, they used that to save a life. And there's a reason that we are doing what we're doing. And when I... I'm not sure how I even heard about you and the I Know I Know um, video, but I thought this just makes so much sense. We have to, I wonder if she would come to Minnesota. And then all of a sudden she's talking about all these places that she's going like, we have to have her come to Minnesota. And um, because it just made so much sense that those of us who struggle with those mental health struggles have to have those connections with each other. And so the connections that I know I know I've been there it all just made so much sense to me so thank you for supporting that um, we got support to do tonight so that we could feed you a lot and bring Shannon here from the Five Wings Art Council so say thank you to them if you get a chance and to your representative because they are the taxpayer it's it's our money that's going to support this kind of work so thank you for coming all the way from the West Coast thank you Jamie um, I'm glad you have a car now that doesn't have like 360,000 miles on it, and um, we are just ready to enjoy. Um, Tom did head out to get some more water, so we don't want anybody dehydrated, and so he'll pop that in there, and there's lots of food left <coughs> after the concert. Please feel free to stay. We're going to talk a little bit, some have some further discussion about what connection means, and talk a little bit about some of the other Brain on Art events coming up. So thank you for being here. It's a beautiful evening. We've been blessed again. Oh, thank I you. Know. Thank you so much. Late last night I rose and wandered stepped outside, looked up in wonder, points of light moving through the sky. And he Am I small and tired from toil and worry taken back by expense and beauty?
Welcome, guys. Hi. So happy you're here. Thank you all so much for being here today. I'm just thrilled to be in this beautiful park with you on this gorgeous summer night. Jody, thank you so much for inviting us to come. Jamie and I are just thrilled. We've been looking forward to this and it's been so nice to get to know some of you guys. Thank you for being here. I'm Shannon Curtis and my husband Jamie and I are on a big adventure this summer. We are traveling all over the country. We're doing nearly 70 shows in 90 days so we're very keeping a very busy schedule and um, we're thrilled to be here this is an unusual show for our tour the rest of our tour i was telling these folks a minute ago is a house concert tour and so most of the shows that we're doing are being hosted by people who support my music but they're hosting us in their living rooms and their backyards this is just kind of like wadina's backyard i'm guessing tonight yeah this is exactly what it is so thank you for inviting us to your house um, and we're having a great time. We're just thrilled that Wadine is on the map uh, for our schedule this summer. And we're celebrating the release of a new album this summer called Connections. And this is a really special album for me um, because it was inspired by events like this. Uh, over the last, this is the fourth summer that we've done a summer house concert tour. And that was sort of an unexpected turn that my career in music took a few years ago and one that I'm so glad that it did. It means, you know, sharing music in intimate spaces with smaller groups of people. And that's a special thing to, to do. It's a really unique experience. And one of the things that we discovered in, in the midst of sharing music in this way is that we've been making some really wonderful relationships with people and some really deep connections with people as a result of doing music like this. And at the end of last summer's tour, I began to wonder what is it that actually connects us to one another? Because, you know, we can have encounters with other people, but that doesn't necessarily mean we've made a connection. And so I started to wonder what it is that, that connects us. And one of the big things that I, that I feel like I was learning from my experiences with people like you is that a connection happens when we allow our genuine selves to be seen and when we get to see that in other people. Whether that means sharing our stories with one another, and sometimes that means sharing the parts of our stories that are more difficult to talk about. Or whether that means sharing with another person our most deeply held hopes and dreams. You know, that's also difficult to talk about sometimes, but when we do, we foster a connection with that person that we've shared with. Or sometimes it has to do with forgiveness and being able to say, I love you first to somebody who's difficult to say I love you too. And so all these ideas are, all, are um, what went into all the songs on this album and it was inspired by interactions with folks like you and that's why it's a special one for me. And this next song was one of the first songs that I wrote for the album and it's the first <laughs> single that we released for the album as well. It's a song called I Know I Know. And this is a song about empathy. This is a song about listening to somebody share their deepest, darkest stuff. And then being able to access a place in your own heart where you can say to them, oh, I understand you because I've been there too. And so when we were getting ready to put together a music video for this song, I thought this could be an interesting opportunity to allow many people to share their stories, to share their struggles, and the hope would be that whoever would see us in this video, no matter what they were struggling with in their lives, might feel less alone. And so I asked my community to participate. I asked them to do something very brave, take a Sharpie pen to a piece of paper, and to write on that piece of paper some challenge they had faced in their life, some struggle they had been through and overcome or that they were still dealing with, and then hold that piece of paper up to a video camera for 10 whole seconds. Dozens and dozens of people dug super deep and shared with us for this video. And we ended up with over 50 people sharing their stories for the video. And we put it on, on Facebook back in April and it went viral, which is something that has never happened to me or to Jamie before. Um, but I think it happened in this case because there were a lot of people out there who did see themselves in our stories <clears throat> and they connected with us. And that's this song. This is I Know I Know.
Come sit right here, tell me everything Start from the beginning Let it all pull out I will catch your story in my wings This is the beginning Of all that we cry out Wow.
So last year, one night, in the middle of the night, I woke up from a dream, and I had all of the lyrics to this next song in my head, and they've pretty much stayed unchanged from the song you're about to hear. And I had to do that thing, you know when you're trying to hang on to a dream that you want to remember, you have to keep yourself in that space between being awake and being asleep, you know? And so I was doing that by keeping one eye open and one eye closed <laughs> and <laughs> feeling around on the bedside table for my phone and I found it and I typed out the lyrics as fast as I could and then put the phone back on the bedside table and fell back asleep into an entirely different dream. But in this first dream, I encountered the guy who was my first husband. And not too many people know this part of my story because these days most people know me as being happily married to Jamie. But I met this guy when I was 14 years old and we started dating two weeks after I turned 15. We dated for uh, the rest of, of high school and uh, were married as soon as I was done with college. We were married for nine years through my 20s. And then when I was 30 years old, we went our separate ways. And you know, when I talk about the more difficult parts of our stories to share, this is definitely part of mine. In fact, for the I Know I Know video, this was the sign that I held up to the video camera for the video. It said, my first marriage ended in divorce. And it's hard for me to talk about because it was a scary and painful time that led up to that event in my life. And it's not something I expected for my life either. You know, I did not enter that marriage thinking it was going to end the way it did. I never thought I would wear the label divorcee. And yet, here I was, 30 years old, and that was my reality. Oh. And the entire thrust of the dream that I had about him, he and I are no longer in touch with each other, but the entire thrust of the dream was me trying to figure out if he's happy. And maybe you have somebody like this in your life too. Maybe it's not a former partner, but maybe somebody that you used to be close to, but just aren't for whatever reason any longer. He is somebody to whom I will always be connected in a very deep and significant way. We practically grew up together and we shared so much of our lives together. That connection will always be there. And he will also be somebody for whom I will never stop wishing happiness. And that was the dream. And this is the song. It's called 4 a.m.
called Continental Divide, and it's on an album that we released last summer. Uh, if you have seen our merchandise display over here, it's the album with the butterfly on the cover. It's called Metaforma, and that's where you'll find the song Continental Divide. This summer, I've been telling you that we're traveling with our new album Connections, but we're also traveling with another new album in addition to that. This other album, though, is, is kind of new slash old all at the same time. It's called Way Back. And it's a collection of the very first songs that I wrote and released when I was first getting started doing my music as a solo artist from way back in the day. Do you see where we got the title? And so <laughs> uh, when I was first getting going, I released three EPs, like some short CDs in um, 2007, 2008, and 2009. And all three of those EPs are on the Way Back album. But it's a 20 track album and the last quarter of the album is some previously unreleased stuff. So. Um, they're, they're the demos, the very first demos that I made when I was just getting started. I was still working at the time as a substitute teacher in Sacramento, California, and I was scraping together my pennies to buy myself my first studio time to record my first little songs. And so those songs are on the end of the Way Back album as well. And I love that we're traveling with this album this summer because this gives me an excuse to play for you one of my favorite songs from way back in the day. But I need to tell you the story behind this song first because I need for you to understand why I'm about to heap upon you large amounts of melodrama. Okay, so follow me down memory lane as I tell you the story behind this song. And it comes from 2008 and uh, when Jamie and I first started dating, I, and I should tell you that now Jamie works as a record producer, so his job is to help artists like me and others to realize their musical vision in recorded form, and he's really, really good at it. Um, but before he was doing that for work, he was working as a front of house sound engineer and tour manager for rock bands, and his job would take him all over the world on tour for you know a month or two at a time, depending on how long the tour was. And there was this one time, this one day in 2008, he had been gone for several weeks already on a European tour, and I woke up this one morning in a funk and surely I was missing him and I was feeling lonely but there was an extra dose 
of mopiness about my attitude on this particular day because on this day, his tour was taking him to Paris, France. A city I'd only dreamt of going to and my boyfriend was there without me and frankly, I was pissed. <laughs> and so I decided to go out and run some errands to distract myself and one of the errands was to take the car to get it washed and I took it to one of those gas station car washes, you know the kind where you pull in the little driveway and then you enter your number into the keypad and you wait your turn. So I did that, I pulled in and I entered my number. And while I'm waiting, so someone's in the car wash when I pulled up, so I had to wait. And then while, we're, while I'm sitting there, somebody else pulled in behind me um, as well. And while we're sitting there waiting our turn, the car wash broke. And so the poor person who was in the car wash was stuck inside the car, the broken car wash. But the person behind me never thought to reverse and get out of there. And so I was also stuck in line for a stinking broken gas station car wash for 45 whole minutes while my boyfriend was in Paris. <laughs> I had a really bad attitude about it. <laughs> I didn't have a smartphone yet. It was before I had a smartphone, so I couldn't even distract myself on Facebook or anything dumb like that. So it was just me and my bad attitude for 45 whole minutes in the car. However, at the end of the 45 minutes, I did have the chorus to this next song composed in my mind. <laughs> so something good came out of it. And now you know why all of, the all of the melodrama. Are you guys prepared for me to tell you the most dramatic, melodramatic uh, title of a song of all time? Are you ready for this? <clears throat> it's called, ready? Paris can't have you. <laughs> I know, right? Here we go, guys. Down melodrama lane. Los Angeles 